The world of Scorn revolves heavily around reproduction and sustaining a failing civilization which ultimately meets its doom. A human who seems to have been heavily modified with his mouth being in the process of fully being shot, wakes up finding himself pinned to the ground alongside many like himself, in the presence of a large organic pillar where many like himself seemingly have suffered the same fate. The man has a tool attached to his left hand which we later discover to be a key which is used to interact with many doors or machinery, used to interact with other parts of the construction as if it's a giant factory. As the man frees himself from his dried organic restraints, his consciousness and vision flashes between two time periods or presences, one crawling towards the pillar and another being someone without the hand key, being present in a post-apocalyptic world crawling towards a high rising structure. As he crawls further, the person in the wasteland falls through a land crevice, awakening in the depth of the mines of the citadel, being heavily fortified with high tech doors and structures, structures that seemingly use the material of organic beings. The two men seem to share one consciousness as the second person without the key gets the consciousness traversing across the mines where he acquires a key which binds to his left hand which he uses to interact with different machinery in the mines. It soon revealed how these machines depend on organic matter to function instead of wires and electronics which depicts in a way how the civilization possibly rose after hundreds or thousands of years changing their way using organic matters to construct things so their waste wouldn't stay behind, not damaging the environment any further. And it also shows instead of using fossil fuels, they relied on organic matters which seems as if they ran out on fossil fuels. Interacting with a large wall which hatches some eggs which are revealed to contain modified humans who self-sustain themselves with the latest technology, feeding on the resources in this place being injected into them, the protagonist places this human on a trolley using a tower to guide the rails, which he manages to use the arm of to open a gate which would have required two personnel. The tower which he interacts with has a screen which he submerges his face in, being able to have a perspective from above, as if there there's a hive mind organism latching to the ceiling, which can be used with certain machinery. So it's not like a simple camera that you can see through, but instead it's an actual consciousness, which the personnel could use to see through the eyes of. This portrays how this world relied on humans for sources of energy and fuel to sustain the world and themselves, with machines such as the trolley and the wall being present to hatch the eggs which are humans and use them. It seems as if these eggs are synthesized, creating fleshy deformed humanoid beings used for powering their machinery and world. The citadel being corroded and disintegrated reveals how the civilization is long gone with only some eggs being alive, with no other human or humanoid entity with the egg entities trapped in their shells for hundreds of years. Behind the gate, the protagonist comes across a large containment kind of machine which has been long decommissioned which contains hundreds upon hundreds of corpses of both men and women who have visibly been experimented on transforming them into different beings. Beings which we later find out to be a fusion between men and women, capable of independent impregnation and completely obedient under a hive mind organism, but much more on that later. Managing to reach an organic pillar which is similar to the first pillar the other buddy saw in the intro, the protagonist finds a pressurized weapon which also acts as a key, revealing how this part of the citadel is the mines where workers used to work in. Several organic capsules are then seen here being grown, which contain fluids, which are probably the male reproductive material extracted to mechanicalize the process of childbirth, instead of the traditional way where children need to be developed for 9 months. Successfully managing to find all the capsules and place them inside the pillar, due to being abandoned and not maintained for so many years, maybe for centuries, the pillar's tubes burst, destroying the wall, with some sort of expanding foam engulfing the protagonist, which seemingly ends his life, with a new perspective of someone else reawakening inside the large organic pot being pinned to his place.
After managing to break his restraints, the new protagonist falls from what seems to be a cocoon or even an artificial womb, falling to the ground and detaching what seems to be an umbilical cord from himself. This protagonist seems to have exposed internal organs compared to the other person as if he's not fully developed or being in a different stage of development or the time period of this mysterious civilization's history. Next to himself, he finds many corpses who seemingly had tried to escape as well but all failed, decomposing to the passing of time with a wall being full of these cocoons all seemingly having an artificially created modified human being. The scene has strong matrix vibes drawing extremely close close resemblance to the pillar where humans were harvested in a farming field then placed on the wall where they would spend the rest of their lives. Of course, their consciousness would also be transferred into a world which was called the Matrix. Maybe these humans were supposed to be in these cocoons controlling different avatars, maybe depicting that the first two protagonists were the consciousness of this human. That's when the new awake protagonist sets foot outside, finding himself in a sandy wasteland where with large land crevices, maybe created naturally or due to the alien-like citadel borrowing its roots and mines underneath. This wasteland is the same where the first protagonist woke up in, which has several empty pots surrounding it, as if other humans were created or transferred in these areas. Viewing the citadel from outside reveals how it mainly used to be built by non-organic material, seemingly metal and other elements having two large exhausts as if this was a spaceship and not a structure originally. Managing to go inside, it soon revealed how it's filled with organic matters, with large tubes connecting to each other which spray corrosive acids which instantly dissolve corpses, revealing how the humans were indeed used and experimented on, where they developed this machinery to efficiently get rid of waste material. Very soon, the protagonist gets attacked by a large parasitic entity which has human arms, latching itself to him, which provides them with the weapon the previous protagonist acquired using it as a key. This displays how this parasite is in fact the remnant of the past protagonist who was engulfed with the expanding foam, transforming him into this parasitic being. After some time finding a key, the protagonist manages to open a flower-like contraption which releases an almost fully formed human being which dies soon after coming out as if not being actually fully developed or not yet equipped with the technology to function, maybe being one of the later synthesized humans who require a hive mind to control them or a consciousness. The protagonist soon comes across the tower which allowed the previous protagonist to shift the rail routes, which depicts how it has corroded seemingly being decades or even hundreds of years since the last person used this part of the mines. Arriving at a large control center where many pods are used as platforms to transport people to other sections of this factory, being essentially used as elevators, the protagonist observes flying parasitic entities which have small tentacles who can latch into other organic bodies. This place seems to be overtaken by waste material and parasitic veins growing these parasitic beings on them, which reveals one major reason why the civilization collapsed, seemingly being toppled down and brought to its destruction because many experiments created byproducts such as these parasites infecting other humans. The protagonist soon comes across an infected body by these parasites which has long lost its humanity, being transformed into a hostile entity, puking acid while while still having human limbs, portraying how it used to be a human, with this displaying how the organic material stretched throughout the factory is the infectious growth and spread of these parasites, which have destroyed such an advanced yet cruel civilization. An evidence showing that the civilization didn't intend creating these veiny materials overtaking the factory is that they actually block many of the moving machinery that have been created, depicting how they were not intentional with these parasites claiming the factory and hindering the process of the machineries. More hostile parasite infected bodies attack the protagonist, one even looking like a chicken throwing projectiles. It's soon shown how these parasites even feed on each other, infecting each other 
together to the point of binding and becoming new entities, which eventually probably become the veiny structures. Soon, coming across a large humanoid being, it's shown how many parasites are growing on its organic body. As if portraying the source of the parasites, especially as this area is significantly overtaken by the parasites. Not long later, the protagonist becomes troubled by his own parasite, which has been riding him since the beginning, who starts depleting the protagonist's health, digging deeper into him, with the protagonist growing tentacles and roots on him, slowly being consumed by this parasite. The protagonist then rides a transporting device which takes him all the way to the main halls of the Citadel, which is decorated with statues honoring the value of reproduction, including both parties, men and women, but displaying them in a modified version. Despite its grand stature and meticulous details in design, the structure is being disintegrated as it's been abandoned for centuries, showing the remnants of a thriving and powerful civilization brought to its knees by parasites. A mere byproduct which seemingly was not even intended. Entering the Grand Hall, the protagonist witnesses an outstretched veiny complex on the ceiling, being similar but different to the veiny parasitic formations, with many humans being connected and tethered to the structure, as if they are all connected. But of course, these humans are long dead, not being connected in any way anymore. A wall mural then shows how the human race has been enslaved and dominated by an alien presence having wings and tentacles, similar to the flying parasites but still different, who intended to transform the human race into a fully obedient entity, wiping their faces, removing their mouths and eyes through years of modification, making them into a robotic being fully submissive to the alien's commands. This shows why so many people were modified, having no mouths, clearly showing they were in the process of becoming what the aliens wanted them to. However, this required many sacrifices and experiments. Another mural shows how the aliens fused both men and women together to create one independent entity capable of giving birth, increasing the reproduction rate so generations after generations could be controlled by the aliens. The flying parasites, which soon infected so many on the other hand, seem to be the byproducts of the aliens fusing themselves to the humans, which created the parasites, destroying both the human race and the new, invading forces of the aliens. More statues and wall murals depict how the alien race was obsessed with the idea of reproduction, who studied humans in an extensive manner, modifying them and synthesizing them so the process of reproduction could be sped up instead of waiting nine months. Months. This in turn would allow the alien race to become more advanced, having advanced limbs to perform so many other tasks. As it's shown, the aliens didn't only want to control the humans, but they wanted to fuse into them and transfer into them as a consciousness. On a platform, the protagonist comes across two human identities who are pregnant, which depicts the final product the aliens wanted to create from the wall mural fully independent humans who are completely submissive and under their control. The protagonist soon comes across pods containing what seems to be the fusion of aliens with humans who do not have fully developed torsos or limbs, but still are advanced enough to connect to cyborgs which they created from humans and other metallic elements fully controlling them. Placing these pods inside the cyborgs which are not fully complete, some start to function, attacking the protagonist, which it destroys, getting the corpses of these mixtures between aliens and humans. This reveals how the protagonist was required to awaken them so their consciousness would be present when he kills them and uses their bodies to extract the fluid which can be injected into the pregnant synthesized products giving them consciousness. The cyborgs, on the other hand, seem to have been guards which the aliens created to defend their civilization, which didn't go too well, with the cyborgs now being not fully functional due to hundreds of years of not being maintained. As the protagonist manages to get all the vials necessary to awaken the pregnant entities, the parasite on him grows severely, stopping him from being able to use his hands as they get overtaken by tentacles, slowly becoming fully consumed. Being left with no other choice, he uses a machine which removes the parasite, but the parasite manages to escape, with the protagonist being severely injured as the result. This machine displays how parasites were a common thing even back several centuries ago, where the aliens created these machines to combat the parasites.
Passing a gate, the protagonist observes a pregnant statue which has flower-like formations under it, depicting how reproduction was synthesized and modified by the aliens, resembling the earlier stage in the game when the protagonist opened one of the flowers with a fully grown man coming out yet quickly dying. This clearly shows how the modified human born was not put in a different machine to finish the stages of his completion, hence why he died. Injecting the pregnant entities with the vials acquired from the embryo-like pods, the entities grow a parasitic eye on them, coming to life yet not showing any sort of sentience and free will. The injured protagonist then climbs in a wheel which restrains him, with a mechanical doctor connecting his brain to the formation above which shows how the formation is indeed a hive mind, transferring the consciousness to the pregnant entities, revealing how the aliens wanted to find a way to transfer their consciousness to the human since the beginning, but not before creating the perfect humans, being a fusion of both men and women who are self-sufficient, who would also be fully obedient with no consciousness of their own. Maybe these entities would eventually give birth to a new breed of a fusion between humans and aliens, with the aliens having the ideal physical form, being self-sufficient, able to reproduce and continue their lineage and civilization, not requiring as much food anymore and able to do everything everything they couldn't before. That's when the protagonist picks up his original buddy from the operating bed, taking a scalpel from the doctor which still performs on the buddy. As the protagonist tries to carry his original buddy out of this horrifying citadel, getting further and further away from the hive mind weakens the signal, switching his consciousness back to his weak and injured buddy. That's when the large parasite from earlier reappears once more, latching onto the protagonist, ending his life with his consciousness slowly leaving his buddy while he regrets losing the new capable buddy reaching out to it. The fusion between the parasite and the protagonist creates a familiar lump which was surrounding the pillar in the beginning of the story, depicting how so many survivors who managed to get out of the cocoons died, with the protagonist being one who managed to get the furthest. The game ended on a very ambiguous note and didn't explain what is actually going on, but by the looks of it, and many hints scattered throughout the game. In my perspective, an alien race crashed on the planet Earth who dominated humans in a war and enslaved them, at first using them as energy sources, but soon started becoming intrigued by procreation, starting to experiment on them to create a single-bodied independent entity. At the same time, they wanted to fuse themselves to humans to become a superpowered being. After centuries, they seem to have created a side product, alien parasites fused with new entities known as humans, which created something they couldn't challenge, killing them all, making the civilization fall. The protagonist seems to have been an earlier version of modified humans, a process which was long abandoned, hence why he had more human characteristics than being the pregnant entities. He seems to try and find an exit from this wasteland, with the last gate appearing to be some sort of a portal, but he ultimately succumbs to his injuries and becomes the target of the parasite. I have a lot more theories and ideas for this game, including its various symbolisms, which I'm planning to make a subsequent video for. If you folks enjoyed this video, make sure to stay tuned for that. It's been your host, R. Thank you for being here, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.